Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Boerter. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We bring to mind our sins, those obstacles in our relationship with God. We ask for his forgiveness. You came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to reconcile us to yourself and to one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You came that we might have a new and abundant life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. And now, in gratitude for this love and this healing, we give God glory. Glory, glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Paul and Barnabas passed on from Pega and came to Antioch of Pisidia, and on the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down. And many Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them and urged them to continue in the grace of God. The next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with jealousy and contradicted what was spoken by Paul, and reviled him. And Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying, It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken first to you, since you thrust it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life. Behold, we turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have set you to be a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the uttermost parts of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the Lord, the word of God. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord spread throughout all the region. But the Jews incited the devout women of high standing, and the leading men of the city. 
and stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and drove them out of their district. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. We, we are, are his people, people the sheep, sheep of his flock. flock. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing for joy. We are oh, his people, people, the sheep, sheep of his, his flock. flock. Know that he, the Lord, is God. He made us, we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. We, we are, are his people, people the sheep, sheep of, of his flock. flock. Indeed, how good is the Lord. Eternal his merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. We are his, his people, people, the sheep of his flock. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked and behold, a great multitude which no man could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands. Then one of the elders said to me, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night within his temple. And he who sits upon the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own, and my own know me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like you to cast your mind back to the elections of 2021. Those municipal elections were incredibly significant. Significant because they had the lowest turnout of any election in our post-democracy history. Only 43% of registered voters decided to vote. And that's not even counting the millions more who decided to not even bother 
with registering. While I'm sure there are many reasons for the decision not to participate, I think it's fair to say that none of the voices they heard resonated with them. They did not recognize the voices of our political leaders. They were not speaking their language. They were not addressing their concerns. Another reason for concern is the rise of extremism in our politics. There are a number of parties who either directly or subtly appeal to the racist within us. Whether it's a white party dedicated to protecting white language and culture, or a black party that deliberately excludes people who are not black. This is a sign to us that the voices people have been listening to are the voices that speak to our fear or our anger or our insecurities. These are the voices that people have recognized and so the voices that they have followed have not come from a place of love or mutual respect. In the gospel today, Jesus speaks about sheep recognizing the voice of their shepherd. I've been told that in the Jerusalem of Jesus' day, various flocks would arrive along with their respective shepherds, but that there was only one rather large sheepfold. So all the shepherds sent all the sheep into it. This made for a, a rather large flock overall. And there wasn't a practice of branding or marking sheep in order to tell one from the other. Well, that kind of raises the question, how could each shepherd reclaim their own sheep? There are two ways. Firstly, the shepherd knew them by heart. Sometimes he had a special name for each character in the flock. And second, the shepherd or the sheep themselves recognized their master's voice immediately. When he called out, they simply got to their feet and came with them through the sheep gate. Jesus refers to this familiarity in our rather short gospel reading. He says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they know me. Haven't you ever longed to hear the voice of someone who could make things all right, who could lift the burdens from your shoulders? Someone who truly sees you, who knows you by name, and who loves you. Well, Jesus says that he is that someone. You shall never perish, he adds, as he holds you in his own hands. It is the Father who has given you to Jesus. and No one will ever be able to take you away from him. Nothing can ever separate you from such love. Jesus is the shepherd who knows us intimately and who cares us or for us intimately far more than the voices of the false messiahs who seek to seduce you into their own false ways of thinking. You know this. Maybe... You just need to be reminded of this every now and then. I have a hunch that you do recognize Jesus' voice when you hear it. Your feelings move when you hear a certain gospel, for instance, or when you receive the bread of everlasting life 
the cup of never-ending salvation, not as a stranger might, but as a member of the well-fed and greatly cared for flock. Your soul seeks him always, and he always finds you. And now, brothers and sisters, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With faith now in this loving, caring God, we bring to him our prayers, our intercessions. We pray for the Church of God, reaching out to care for and protect all who are lost and longing to belong to a fellowship of love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of all nations, that they may hear and recognize the voice of the Prince of Peace, calling for justice and freedom for all who are oppressed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves and the communities in which we live, work and worship, that we may care for one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all in any kind of distress or pain, that they may know that they are held safely in the Father's hands and nothing can snatch them from him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to hear our prayers. Those we've spoken out loud, and those that we've prayed in our hearts, for we ask them all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, and with himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands to become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. God, we with this grace we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands, for 
the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all the last day of church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always delight in these Paschal mysteries so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in, in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, Drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis our Pope, with Buti Tlachale our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, and with all the saints who've done your will throughout the ages, we may merit to share eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God Father, and so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await in joyful hope the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have us, Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace, giving God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.